And they say you can't have a good story without the big three in the DC universe. But this movie is a great example of how you can effectively do that and still have a great movie. Welcome back to that to wrap the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's movie that I will be reviewing is the animated DC movie, Justice League Dark. If you're not familiar with this movie, consider this your spoiler warning because I will be talking about this movie. And I know, I know I'm not going in order. I'm kind of skipping back and forth. I'm not familiar with the order to watch these movies. I'm just kind of watching them as they come along. So if you guys know the actual chronological order, put it down in the comments so I could watch it and kind of get a broader feel from the story. But I feel these movies are so good standalone movies, even though it would maybe enhance the viewing experience. It's not like the Marvel Cinematic Universe where one movie overlaps to the next, or at least in certain properties that it wants you to follow. These are pretty much little, in, you know, uh, hints about another movie, but then kind of carries on to its own movie. I really, really did enjoy this animated movie a lot. It wasn't as good as the other ones, I will say. I found some of the story lagging in, in some places, but we'll get into that. If you guys aren't familiar with the way I review movies, I kind of break it down to the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's start with the bad. Well, before I get it, start start off with the good, the bad, or the ugly, let's just give a, a, a really quick summary of this movie. So the Justice League becomes aware. We, while we get introduced to this movie with seeing citizens acting weird, acting, seeing things that are not there. We see a woman running over a bunch of pedestrians, but in her mind, she sees them as aliens. We see a mother like launch her kid off of a building that Batman saves because she thinks the baby's demonic. And we see Superman help uh, or uh, help a family. The dad was going to shoot her mom and her two kids or his, his wife and his two kids because in his mind, he was seeing them as demons. And then, you know, he takes Bat Superman to the yard you know he opens up a shed where he has like multiple almost like i think a dozen bodies that he's killed because he thinks there's like some kind of alien invasion and he's doing good uh really really dark subject matter but again this is uh, maybe that's why they call it justice league dark because they they might, it might deal with a little bit more of a dark subject even though i think it's more for the involvement of constantine and and other, you know, witches and, and wizards and witches, I guess. Because they they, ha they talk about dark magic a lot. So I'm assuming that's what it is. Anyway, so the Justice League, among others, are now tasked with the mission to find out where this is coming from. And they go through the hero's journey as per usual, if, like, you know, everybody likes to say. And they end up finding out that it was something that happened decades earlier, maybe even hundreds of years before the events that were seen where Merlin, the magician, is involved. And I love that fact. I, that was actually, even though I'm an avid comic book reader, I, I, you know, I, I don't know why I only think... I know there's Zeus and, and the, the, the Greek gods are in there, but... I don't remember anything about Camelot or Merlin being in them, but if you guys know which issues they are, put them down in the comments so I could take a look at those comics because I feel kind of dumb when I found that out. I was like, really? I was like, oh, I didn't even know this was part of the universe, but it was so good. So they find out where the original curse came or the villain that was introduced. And, you know, we flash forward to the current time in this movie they ultimately figure that out and bring justice to the world once again and cast out the demonic and evil forces. So basically that's the plot in a nutshell. I'm going literally the shallow of it because I could dive in more to it, but I don't want to make this another 30 minute video. I want to keep them condensed. So anyways, with all that blah, 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 let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the ugly, like I said earlier, was 
there wasn't really much I could, and this is nitpicking, by the way, because I thought the voice acting was good. It's a lot of similar voice acting, which I do like. Even though we can't have a cinematic universe, the fact that we do have a this animation universe, and they really go out of their way to to cast the same characters. Now, there has been a lot of Supermans, but Rosario Dawson is is a constant when they play Wonder Woman, even though I think recently they have recasted her uh, as Wonder Woman, even though I, I don't know if Rosario is moving on to other projects. I've heard that's the case or when, you know, if they do hit back, maybe she'll, you know, come back to that role. But for, from what I hear, she's moved on to other projects. So they recasted Wonder Woman. Plus, it's a different universe. Like... I know that this has been, I think, a 15, again, I don't know the chronological order, but it's 15 movies that have started with the Flashpoint Paradox. Again, I might be wrong. If I am, let me know down in the comments that I'm an idiot. And it ends debatable. I've seen some tell me that, hey, look at this one, or I, I think it's Wonder Woman, The Clash of Gods or something like that. Again, let me know the, the chronological order that I should watch this. So... I haven't watched that one yet, so I'm I'm trying to to watch the ones I know. I think another one I'm supposed to watch is the uh, Batman, Arkham Sun or something like that. But anyways, so they try to do a great job with holding the characters that they have, and I really really do respect that part of it. So the one of the the only bad thing that I put down was towards the end of the movie, as Constantine and and the 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 friends i i want to call them uh, are with him and they're having that final scene and they say oh you know the justice league should be in here shortly to help us and then the other i can't remember his name i think i don't know if it was boston the daredevil kind of equivalent i guess says like okay but don't let don't let the justice league get hit by the power or else you'll be have more stuff on your hand than just uh, this wizard. And we do see like the Green Lantern get hit, right? He gets hit and he gets blasted back and he hits like a billboard. Then he sees Batman and he starts freaking out because he sees Batman as a demon and then goes after Batman. But then we see like Wonder Woman attack Constantine and Superman. And I'm like, wait, when did they get hit with the with the force or when did the power hit them? It was very inconsistent with that part of the story, which, you know, uh, took me out a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute. When when did they get hit with the power? Why are they all of a sudden fighting Constantine or seeing Constantine as a as a demon or something or maybe it was batman but either one you know they were they were fighting on this because batman and constantine are, are like in the team up situation among others but i i i did it i just maybe again we maybe they got hit off camera or off screen as they say but it's definitely for animated movies you have to let us see that because it takes you out right away because you don't know all, all we knew as the as the audience was that the green lantern got hit not the rest of the justice. But anyways, that's the the one bad the the ugly part of this. The the bad part that I felt in this or a couple things that I found kind of bad. And this goes with the other the Justice League Dark, the Apocalypse War is Constantine's power level. Again, this movie just goes out of its way to show how Constantine is smarter than Batman. His powers are just unmatched by even other magicians. He knows every spell. He he, he knows it all. And I, I only know, Con I mean, I know Constantine from the comics, but I also know him from the live action movie. He hasn't been around that long as like you would say, like a Merlin or, or one of the actual other wizards that has, that has been alive for 300 plus years, maybe even more, 500 years. And that would have that mastery of it. But yet Constantine's power level is so high that no, he, you never feel like anything is in jeopardy as far as just him. Um, the apocalypse, the apocalypse war did, it was the same issue, even though they threw us a little twist, but it was just a, such a, such a small twist. And, I, and I'll give it to them. 
it shook me when when he died in the apocalypse where I was like, oh crap, maybe his power isn't all that great. But this one, um, and I I think this is before Apocalypse War, which probably is the reason why they did that in the Apocalypse War movie because it's just so crazy that his power level is so elevated like that. So I found that a little bit off-putting. And again, this is just a little, a little uh, off-putting. So in the scene where I think it's Constantine, no, I, I don't know if it's Constantine. I think in Zendaya and Batman are in the Batmobile. And in the beginning, we see like the Batman goes into like, uh, I don't know if it was his lair or some, or maybe one of the houses that he was at. But he sees that Constantine written all over the walls. And I guess this was Boston, an acrobat that got shot and died. And you could only see his spirit. And it's and they played for gags because all three are in the Batmobile. And Boston's in the back seat telling Zend Zendaya to like be like, oh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Batman. Tell him this. And then like a little bit of action happens. So the animation is the part that I had a problem with. So he's see-through. And he's not supposed to be able to communicate with Batman. But in a, 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 a scene, you could see that he's no longer translucent or transparent and basically tells Batman to floor it and Batman complies with it. Now, again, this is probably one of the harshest criticis criticisms that I'm going to put in, even though it is a nitpick. But I, 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 if you're in a live action or a regular movie with humans, I let that pass for the most part. But how you did an animated movie and animate him not see through and then have Batman, at least someone wrote it in the script and have, oh, Batman reacts to it and presses the, you know, steps on the gas or whatever. I mean, what are you doing? I mean, you know, this is, you have one job to animate and to get that, that right. And you can't do that. And then the storyboard, you couldn't, someone couldn't say like, yo, and maybe it, it's a lot of money to redraw and all that stuff. And I get that. But if you're doing an animated movie, you have to, that attention to detail to stuff like that has to be your top priority. But anyways, again, it just, it took me off a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute. And because it, later on when they reached their destination, Batman still can't because they're searching for Constantine. So when they they find Constantine, because it's like his his moving fortress is like invisible and he moves it around. It's not in one set location. When they get there, he does the same thing. And then Constantine goes like, oh, no, I'm not playing telephone between you guys and cast a spell to make Boston now visible and, and, and hearable. You can hear him and see him now. So that little misstep right there, again, for an overall good movie, was it just takes me out and disappointing that the, no one saw it. Or maybe they just they did notice it, but didn't give two cents about it. The last part, which I'll, I'll end it here, was with the good, was such a great story. I keep on saying that, so it keeps on. It keep. It feels redundant to me. Now, the more I keep on watching these DC animation, you know, alongside with Warner Brothers Studio, and I should give more credit to Warner Brothers Animation. I'm sure they have a hand in doing, um, in doing most of this. Some of it, I don't know what you know, who's who or what's what, but uh, such a great story for an animated movie to have these kind of nuances and and show the level of storytelling that it's a shame we can't have this and not just speaking with 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 uh, superhero movies let's just take that aside this type of imagination this type of risk taking this type of storytelling is so lost now in Hollywood and it's such a disappointing thing to see when you see you see the potential of a studio because storytelling yes granted it is superhero so you have a little bit of leniency but we've seen it in horror movies it, this is a this is like you could adapt this storyline to a horror movie not not keep, just throw away the DC part adapt the the 80% of this storyline and adapt it to like a, a sci-fi movie or a horror movie or something like that. I know I say horror like like a horror, like horror movie um, would be great, would be amazing, will be something that will, I mean, probably even win awards. Why Hollywood stays in these parameters that just keep on popping out cookie cutters, same old thing, same old thing. I don't know, you know. I mean, I enjoy the, the, the modern, you know, trends going on, but... 
these stories are are so relatable, so on point, so dramatic. We get in a, a, a feeling of loss, of gain, of excitement. Uh, the comedy's on point. The whole thing. So again, hats off to Warner Brothers Studios. The writers, the directors of this movie, another, as everyone says, another banger of a, of a movie that you guys produce. But so I give this movie a B minus just because of the subtle, you know, technicalities that I mentioned in the ugly and the, the bad. But overall, I would highly recommend this movie to anyone that likes good storytelling and great animation. But that's just my thought. I'm more interested in what you guys think. Leave me your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.